Hi, I'm Bob Canote, and it's springtime here at Camp Chaos, and that's the time of year where the man's heart lightly turns to thoughts of fixing the AC in his Jaguar XJS so every drive isn't a dang death march. You know what I'm talking about. Dang it. The climate control system in this car is a Delanair Mark III. It's a very common system found in the XJS uh, during the 1980s and early 90s. In fact, the Delanair Mark IV has a lot of things in common with this system. Now this car, the 1990 convertible that we're restoring, that needs to be working perfectly when it gets into the hands of the client. But not only that, my 1990 convertible, it needs to be serviced. I think it, it has a compressor that's uh, that's leaking, but also there's a lot of little things in there that I want to I want to take a look at. Also, my 1987 coupe, old Tex. I think the AC is working in that one, but I think it's clogged up with nutshells that the rodents that had their way with that car when it was sitting in the backyard in Texas perpetrated on it. So, now I've had some experience with air conditioning systems. I have charged systems with refrigerant. I've rebuilt a compressor. I've done most things, except that I've never actually gotten in and taken one apart. Tony, on the other hand, he is an ASA certified climate control technician. So he's gonna be taking me to school on this system. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take it out of that car. And we're gonna breadboard it and actually take a really good look at how this system operates. Now another thing that I would say is, uh, if you're gonna be doing a restoration on a car like this, take everything apart, I would say before you put the engine in it, do everything you can on the firewall and in fact the engine compartment in general and also get everything under dash completed before you put that engine in. It just make it a lot easier because there's things that go from the inside to the outside that are going to be really tough to get to. So let's see how this system works. Let the chaos begin. A big part of getting everything taken care of under the dash has been getting the air conditioning system sorted out. And it's been kind of a big deal getting this thing to work. And if it weren't for the fact that I had two or three other boxes out, it might have been a lot worse than it actually was. I didn't really have to go anywhere in order to get parts except for one thing, and we'll get into that later. Before we go any further, uh, I'd like to mention that this wooden crutch that I uh, mounted everything on was really really valuable this is on my dime because i got two other cars of my own that i need to do this with and uh, i tell you what this has been just a real advantage to have this uh, we got a vacuum pump in order to drive the va various actuators on the different uh, functions of the of the system we've got a heater valve here we got a vacuum reservoir we got the various controls and by the way well, as long as we're here uh, if I turn the temperature knob, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's that motor. What that does is it varies the temperature from hot to cold, uh, coming from the upper air box here, which has the heater uh, in it and the air conditioning evaporator. And if I go to this one right here, on this side, and go to defrost. You can hear that motor right there run, if I can actually, there it is, that one's running. So we know that the motors run, we know that the switches work, and we know that the uh, uh, feedback sensors are working. Also, one thing that, uh, that we can tell here is that this wire right here, this takes signal to the relay of the air conditioning compressors clutch and you can see when we turn this switch over here that one right there to on we get that signal which is what we need to kick the relay and 
Also, this unit right here, which varies the temperature of the center vent, when we got it in high, we can hear that that works too. Another thing is this stuff right here. These, what look like wires, these are actually fiber optic cables. The way this works is that you've got these ends of the fiber optic cables that go into a housing in the uh, center console, and there's a light that shines on it, and uh, the light is conducted from this end to the other end, and this whole thing lights up. So let's plug the fans in and see what happens here. Okay, what we've got when it's set in the low position, this duct right here and this one right here go to the back of the car through the tunnel. This one right here is footwell and we've got nothing coming through up here, but we do have a little bit over here. This is at low. Let's go to high. And all the way cold. And for this to really work, we need to turn on the vacuum pump. Hopefully you can hear me. And so what's happening here is we've got our defrost vents closed. And we've got the cowl vents that draw air into the fan motors from the cowl, from outside air. We've got those closing. And we've got the ones in the bottom opening. And what this does is it causes the air to be drawn in here from the footwell, which is going to be cooler than that outside. And this thing closes it off up here on both sides. This uh, is the uh, recy recirculation cooling. And you can also see at that point that we got air coming out of this vent right here. And we got a lot of air coming out of the a lot more air coming out of the footwell and also underneath here. So, and then let's say that we want to do defrost. We got the defrost vents up here. We go to the defrost function of the control and we can see that these things open. So there we go. It's ready to go in the car. Now, everything that I just did was in manual mode. You pull this thing out and you can adjust it, set it to whatever temperature. If you want to put it on automatic mode, uh, then you set a temperature and it will automatically maintain that. Out here, uh, you got to move it around until you get the temperature, uh, you know, the way you want it to be. Here, it's taken care of automatically. In automatic mode, we've got this sensor right here that's uh, soldered to the bottom of one of the heater core tubes, which senses uh, coolant temperature. We've got this one right here, which fits in the side of the uh, evaporator case, which senses the temperature at the evaporator. We've also got inside of one of these fans here, we've got a uh, ambient or outside air temperature sensor. And then right here, we've got a, a cabin temperature sensor that takes air from this fan on this side, brings it over the top here, blasts it through a venturi where it sucks in air, which draws it over the, the uh, sensing element. I've got no way of actually testing these without putting this in the car and uh, and giving it a shot after we get the engine running and the system charged. But we do have a manual here that is really, really detailed on how to troubleshoot this system. That's the uh, electronic control module right there. And you can see right here, all these pins sticking out. Well, nothing goes to those pins. We actually use those pins to test this thing out. We can test the ECM and we can also test all the sensors using that. So that's real interesting. So things are moving along. Oh, one, one other thing is the only thing that we really found that was bad was on the bottom. Don't know if you can see them. No, you can't. 
have to look in there. We got these vacuum solenoids. We had one of those that wasn't working properly that we had to go to one of the other boxes for. And uh, also this switch here, I had to actually pull out of my car, one of my cars. Uh, got one coming, but in the interest of keeping this thing going, uh, the problem was that this thing, it worked, but it actually rotated 360 degrees. It felt like, I mean, clearly it was broken. There's a stop missing. So uh, we got one that really works very well. Yeah, there it is. And this is getting ready to uh, be put in the car when Tony gets back from his spring break in San Francisco. So we're making good progress. Well, that's an overview of how this Delanair Mark III system works. Now, clearly I didn't go into a lot of specifics about how I renovated the internals of the system. There's several places inside that have to be, uh, have to have the foam replaced in order to seal around the heater core and around the, uh, the evaporator. So we didn't go into that and you have to also uh, resurface the doors. They're sort of semi-cylindrical doors that have a fabric service on them that deteriorates over time. Not gonna do that. That would be like a 45 minute video. However, this fall, I'm hopefully going to be replacing the engine in Old Tex, and that'd be a good time for me to pull that one out because I gotta replace the dash anyway. It's cracked. And, uh, and then I can show you exactly how that's done or we did it. So, if you like these videos, like, subscribe, and maybe leave some comments down below so that we can know what we do to do we do better. And we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.